Isaac Newton, Master of the Mint, by David Ashton. I'm innocent. I swear it, sir. The facts would seem to contradict you, Mr. Question. All lies. Let us examine the evidence. Piss upon it. Let us examine. Mr. Haynes, can you bring the depositions? Certainly, Mr. Newton. Thank you. When my agents and I searched the cellars of your house, we found as follows. A cutter to render plate fit for coining. What would that signify? From my recently acquired empirical knowledge, it is the first step in the minting process. It produces coin blanks. Means nothing. Outside the house, in the earth, buried, hidden at the back of a broken chamber pot, was a stocking full of various dyes that would engrave both guineas and shillings. Left there by some villain. And in an outhouse, a large press to effect the coining of money. That would be difficult to overlook, Mr. Quested. I have sworn witnesses that your wife, Jane Quested, was observed to have milled the guineas from a mixture of genuine coin clippings augmented by pewter and other base metals. What witnesses? Friends and neighbours. What would we do without them? I deny it all. I will stand trial. You will be found guilty. And under the laws of this land, punishment will be the same as that of treason. For Mistress Quested in particular... My wife burned to death. That is the law. But sign a confessive deposition and she may yet escape the flames. And as for I? It is a hanging matter. My wife did just as I told her. An exceptional woman. I'll sign it. Mr. Haynes, bring pen and ink. At your behest, sir. Can you read, Mr. Quested? Of course I can. A fine accomplishment. Top to bottom, please. Uh, Before signing. I, Isaac Newton, have become a criminal investigator. How has this come to pass? Well, I'm not a stupid man, but neither am I omnipotent. And the events that have led me here were beyond my ken, and, even to a certain extent, behind my back. Why are we always at war with the French? National pastime. Large armies must be paid. Ah, You are Chancellor of the Exchequer, Mr Montague. Moneys is your suit. The Bank of England has tried. I have tried. Lotteries, bonds, taxes. We can raise no more from the populace. Surely you do not contemplate vexing the rich. I would be assassinated within the day, Mr Vernon. And as Secretary of State, I would be duty-bound to lead the firing squad. (laughs) (laughs) The country has two crucial problems. One, a poor exchange rate of silver due to Dutch manipulation. Uh, Silver is our standard, sir. Like the British flag itself. They both stand alone. And the second problem, my dear sir? The enemy within. Counterfeiting. Scarce a coin in this country holds real value. Clipped, shaved, the silver mixed with inferior metal then presented into commerce. It, It floods the country. Surely the concern of the Royal Mint. And Isaac Newton. Your appointment. Should he fail, the Tories will tear you to ribbons. Mm. Does Newton comprehend the problem? I have warned him of certain challenges. I am hopeful he will find a remedy. A genius, to be sure. Gravity, laws of motion, the Principia. But that is natural philosophy. Politics, the real world, is a barrel full of rats. Interesting, is it not, that everything, every living being, plant, creature, and most especial human, has time built inside its form. This rose, so beautiful, will wither and die. The butterfly that rests briefly upon the rose, so exquisite, the bee that sips so busily, all have their allotted span. Only God is eternal. Now, my friend... How did you get past the cards, eh? Therefore, apart from snails, we must live our time with joy. 
The Bible tells us so. I cannot say that joyfulness and I walked hand in hand through the meadows of Cambridge, but I have caught glimpses in birdsong, a falling leaf, a plummeting apple as gravity takes its course, and further sightings within the exactness of mathematical thought. Uncle Isaac, time for tea. Time is indeed of the essence. Uh, Mr Montague trembles to begin the cakes. It is your beauty, Miss Barton, that causes me to tremble. <laughs> it is the cake. Appetite is everything. I pronounce myself almost replete. I'm grateful to hear so. You had but one small slice, Uncle. It was sufficient. Sufficient unto the day be the evil thereof. Spoken like a true politician. Shame on you, Uncle, to tease so. Charles Montague was my pupil at Cambridge, therefore I may tease him to distraction. An average pupil, Catherine. Yet behold you now, sir. Chancellor. The whirligig of time brings in its revenges. Revenges? A recent Tory broadside shouted on the streets to inform London, our greatest scientific mind reduced to that of a glorified clerk. I would not term the warden of the Royal Mint a glorified clerk. Nevertheless, I am employed by the government, the Whig government. Ergo, you are my employer. Our honour and privilege. Transported. Cambridge to German Street. Plus a garden. Yeah. With snails and weeds. My uncle has a somewhat punctilious attitude towards nature. A decent virtue. And accordingly, I intend to begin official duties this very day. I am sure you will more than meet the challenge, sir. Gather me a fine crew, Jack. Skilled in the arts. How many, Mr Chandler? Four will suffice. Sweet fellows. Quiet. Not talk out of turn. I want a house. Outskirts, no neighbours. <laughs> Holborn. You can't sit in a looking glass here, save somebody at your back. Our craft draws attention. Find me otherwise. Do my best. Don't fail me, Jack Carter. I've never failed you. Good boy. <laughs> Perfect time. A new fellow at the Royal Mint. Man of letters. Isaac Newton. We'll run him ragged. <laughs> Yourself, sir? It would seem so. Mr Newton? In person. Uh, um, I've been awaiting you. I knocked for a length of time. The, the, the noise from the coining rooms can be considerable. Ah. And you are? Haynes. Hopton Haynes. At your service. Now perhaps you might begin this service by allowing me entrance. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> A little dark on these stairs, as well to guard your footing. Are you a supervisor here, Mr. Hent? No, <laughs> a clerk. Accounts. Accounts? The accounts of the Royal Mint are multitudinous. Uh, hard to breathe, like a dungeon. Almost there, sir. I climb these stairs every day. I'm lost in admiration. Here we are, sir. The clerks work in this space. Your office is through that small door to the side. It is so much threadbare. Uh, but never cold. In winter, the heat from the coining rooms below brings relief. I'll be candid with you, Mr. Haynes. I expect you to be met by Thomas Neal, the master here. His presence is seldom noted. Then who is in charge? I am. I run the place top to bottom, and much thanks I get. Uh, Mr Elliot Miller, sir, our premier craftsman in silver. You'll be Newton, the new warden. I am. We rarely see Mr Neil. never stops long. Like yourself, sir. Finds it difficult to breathe. So, he leaves immediate, for the sake of his health. Know anything about the workings of the Royal Mint? No, but it is not my nature to remain in ignorance. Very well. If it's knowledge you seek, follow me. But I warn you, sir, you have inherited a nest of vipers.
To my knowledge, there are nine circles of hell in Dante's Inferno. I was put in mind of this as we descended another staircase into the coining rooms. Narrow regions, one after another, huge fires belching flame, gigantic cauldrons where men grimed and blackened by the smoke from the charcoal, like so many devilish helpers, tended the fire under the huge crucibles. Silver bullion, such as we can buy, and there's not much to be found, into the mother's womb and down she melts it to liquid. You could bathe yourself, Mr. Newton, and become a man of precious metal. The heat was monstrous, as the liquid silver was poured into sand moulds to make ingots, and once cooled, then the machinery took over. It is written that the mills of the gods grind exceeding small. These huge, crushing, rolling mills would be of that ilk, as they flattened the ingots to thin silver plates. Further down below, in another room, I could hear the giant capstans turn as they powered the mills. Horses pulled the capstans, squealing and neighing as they turned in a grinding circle of laborious toil that led to nowhere. The machinery is worn out, like the rest of us. We cut the rounded blanks from the plate, then the final step, to image the coin. Our man sits in a pit there below floor level, puts a coin blank into the striking chamber, four men pull the ropes of the big capstan, arms spin and the press drives two steel dies into the faces of the coin, deep and sharp. Dies retract and the pitman flips out the newborn coin and then replaces another blank. Simple. Hard endeavour. Capstan men are fatigued after just 15 minutes. Replaced. Pit boy is not so lucky. One mistake, you lose a jointed part. Like me. See? Four finger gone. Too slow. The machine has no pity. It's like a vision out of hell. Sadly, I cannot point you the way to heaven, sir. I lack the digit. And how did you find your kingdom, sir? Kingdom? Mr. Newton thought it to be like something out of hell. Nest of vipers, you have heard, Mr. Miller. What did you mean by that? Corruption everywhere. Trust, not a living soul. Hmm. My office through that door, did you say, Mr. Hens? Yes. I wish you to bring me the account books of the Royal Mint. All of them? All of them. I must get to know my kingdom. Should we not be about business, Mr. Chandler? Not yet. <laughs> Ah, here's my quarry. <laughs> Mary Doherty, I'd admire a word. I'm lost to you, Albert Chandler. Uh, not yet, you're not. Come on. <sighs> hey. Well? You're pretty as a picture, Mary. What do you want? I have things on hand. Oh, I can see your mark from here. Pretty as a picture. I've always had taste. Didn't stop you moving on. A man must rove. Still have your girls on hand. Yes. And no whores, sluts, no Covent Garden nuns. I'll leave that sort to you, Jack Carter. I have a job for thee, Mary. Make us both a fine return. When? Soon. Dress your girls up proper. Passing out a deal of coin. Best quality, I guarantee. What is it? John Gibson. Behind you. He's a thief taker. I am an artist. Searching out Joseph Ratchet. Owes money to a lender. Anyone who befriends him is an enemy of mine. Those who betray him will earn a little penny. That's the word. I'd buy you a drink, John, but you seem to be about your business. Some other time, Chandler. What I said. Pass the word. You beat hell out of a friend of mine. Just a young girl. Dirty beating. Bad buggers, the Scotch. Let you know time and occasion. Do that. Goodbye. What a kettle of fish, eh, Jack? Just so I like it. How was your day, Uncle? Tiring. <laughs> Any particular cause? <laughs> People. <laughs> Those contradictions in logic. Mm. <laughs> How was the coffee house? I basked in admiration. Who was there? Mr Swift and I argued over politics. Oh, not a rare occurrence. Mr Dryden and Mr Pope versified. You the candle and three ancient moths to the flames. Shame upon you, <laughs> sir. 
I'm grateful, Catherine, that you come to keep me company here. It is my privilege. I remember you used to visit our home when I was a little girl. Well, you followed me everywhere. Do you recall that game we played, the apple and the knife? Oh. I would climb the tree, drop the apple, and yeah, you... I remember it well. A foolish pastime, and quite dangerous. Do you still possess that knife? I carry it always, in case of footpads. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for supper. You must excuse me. I have much to contemplate. Uncle... In your study on the table, there is a book. A book? With a red binding. I found it in your old papers. A diary of sorts, I think. Ah. I thought I'd lost it. Thank you. These streets, they stink. All of human nature is here. But watch, into the doorway. Ah! <laughs> Damn! Carriages! Oh, I shall have one someday. Big wheels, so that I can acquaint folk like you, Jack, with your own wastage. Hey? Rich folks' houses are cleansed by the night soil men, not thrown into the courses on the street. This is your creation. It stinks! <laughs> <laughs> Don't make a move, my friend. It could cost you. Keep your distance, Jack Carter. Do as you told, Jack. No way, I'm Chandler. You know this blade. Phillips. Bob Phillips. As I live and breathe. You owe me payment. Not slip my mind, sir. Kind in equipment. Best quality. I sold you. Now, I want me money. Bob, I've seen me West Coast pocket. Reach over to the other hand. What do you find, sir? A watch. But not a false one. Take it to your ear. When I left Birmingham, my, my dying mother gifted me that watch. Steer it to me, the life yourself, and I offer as guarantee that I will redeem such by dint of payment. On my mother's grave, I swear that you will have your money within these two weeks. On my mother's grave! I'll take it. Have your throat back. Two weeks it is! You must have dogged us in the street. Careless of me. You bought that watch, Mr Chandler? From a Newgate jailer. I don't appreciate a knife at my gullet. Bob Phillips may find I know other ways to settle outstanding debts. Catherine was correct. It was indeed a diary. Sometimes it is better to keep one's thoughts to oneself. A man might live longer in such a case. I'm greatly in favour of that possibility. Uncle Isaac, what are you doing? Burning the past, my dear. Some years ago I suffered an embroilment. My consistency of mind was riven. It was a... It was a dark time. I heard that you were ill. Like Icarus, I flew too near the sun. And this journal recorded my rites of passage. I tried to proved to myself the existence of God through a kind of transmutation of matter, base metal into precious stone. You mean like alchemy? That would be dangerous. A hanging offence. Best it goes up in smoke. This place is like a ruin. What's happened, Mr. Miller? One of the capstans split a spar. It will change. Two weeks he's been in that room and done nothing. Well, Mr. Newton needs to know facts. I'm off to find a piece of solid oak. See if I can mend the damn thing. Have faith. Like a ruin. May I have a word, Mr. Haynes? Oh, uh, certainly, sir. Yours to command. I am appalled, Mr. Haynes, by what I have discovered. Well, the fault is not mine, sir. Money wasted hand over fist? The upkeep of our equipment parlous? Large sums seem to have disappeared into the ether. How has this malpractice come to pass? I, I cannot tell you here, Mr. Newton. Why not? The walls have ears. Then let us walk the Thames. As we pace by the river, I look back to where the Tower of London rose up to the sky. Turrets and battlements, four square and fortified, walls thick with purpose. All of it hiding the royal mint within, like a rotten tooth. Well, Mr. Haynes, proceed to divulge. 
Thomas Neal is a wastrel. The very definition of patronage, surely. Well, he's paid more than you, sir. Ah, we must rise above small considerations. What is important to you, Mr Haynes? A false coin is everywhere. And we do nothing. We're like a corpse riddled with worms. I am in charge of a shipwreck, Mr Montague. A challenge, to be sure. I realise from study the chaos now existing at the Royal Mint. But tell me, if you will, what is the financial state of our country? Somewhat perilous. Clarify. The Dutch are able to manipulate the exchange rates between here and the continent and turn in a tidy profit by taking our silver abroad. And you can do nothing about this? It is not against the law. Then that is your concern. Counterfeiting is mine. Yes, and it is a pernicious enemy. The stakes could not be higher. For you or for the country? Both. Very well. I shall take upon myself the task to eradicate this evil root and branch. My most grateful thanks, Isaac. You will hear from me. I'm certain you will prevail, sir. I am walking into a den of thieves, and you have led me there. Well, what say you? Perfect. Our stands alone. Hegham Village, 20 miles from London. Quiet country folk for neighbours. Not nosy. Perfect. So, when do we make a start? Always in a hurry, Jack. How you make a mistake? Next thing you're a dead man. All right, all right. Come in a few weeks. Bring it in. Materials, goods, men. Coin in tackle, but quietly. Listen. Listen to how quiet it is. Twelve of the hour. Oh, I miss that watch. In the pawn shop now. <laughs> Bob Phillips will regret such. Doesn't pay to get to my bad side, Jack. I've been considering your words, Mr Haynes. I regret to cause such perturbation, sir. I'm not perturbed. I was thinking. A thinking. Well, surely not a foreign pastime? No, I think all the time. Excellent. Then you can help me wage war. In what fashion, sir? The Mint is a castle under siege. Time to fight the enemy on their own ground. Listen to this, Mr Vernon. My dear Charles, in light of our previous conversation, I propose as follows. I will couch it in monetary terms, as this seems to me the only way to address a government official. Not terribly flattering. The price to pay for my complete involvement in the plan of campaign I intend to wage against counterfeiters is not negotiable. A trifle arrogant. He's entitled to his arrogance, mm. unlike the rest of us. Thomas Neal must be prevailed upon to resign the mastership of the Royal Mint, and I will take total command. What? Let me see. I will also need a large sum set aside to pay for the campaign, the details of which I can supply later. I also require that my remuneration be increased to at least the same level as Neil's, since I will be doing the work of two, plus the task of destroying the enemy. I consider this a reasonable demand. Your humble servant, Isaac Newton. <laughs> no one will know you, sir. I resemble a scarecrow. <laughs> well dressed for this place. <laughs> the dog tavern. What a spectacle. I, th I thought it important for you to see those against whom you would wage battle. Um, and it is from places of this nature that you must recruit your company. How so? You need men who can slip into the background, observe those who receive and would pass the coin. Set a thief to catch a thief. Exactly. How is it, if I may ask, that you know so much of this delicate world? A passing acquaintance only, sir. You've heard of Neil's resignation? I restrained my sorrow, sir. So you are now master of the mint? Yes. Very well, then. Let us recruit. What in God's name is he doing in that pokey little den? Mr Newton is forming a private force. To do what, may I ask? Investigation. You must excuse me. What about our old machinery? When does it get replaced? When Mr Newton can spare the time. 
Mr. Newton is not the Almighty. Jeb Albright, sir. Never been arrested. Not even close. Will Fall, sir. Watchman. By the warehouse burnt down. David Slacky, sir. The plague took my wife. I have a son to care for. Gideon Marsh. A religious man, but I lost me way. I seek redemption. Jiggy don't, sir. I'll fight any man living. <sighs> ah, Mr. Haynes. We may have found some men upon which we can reckon. We must begin with that. Uh, there's one more person, sir. John Gibson, thief taker. I can be useful. In what way? You want to kill rats? Yeah, find out where they nest. Well, the false coiners. I can at least one of their hidey holes. But it'll be dangerous. I'm not afraid of such. Ah, I see that in your eyes, sir. Very well. You're hired. I don't come cheap. Mr. Haynes here will see to that. Ah, and you, sir. Do I not know you? I doubt it. No, you seem familiar. Perhaps we've been in the same pleasure house together, eh? I doubt it very much. Make sure you fulfil your end of the bargain, Mr. Gibson. Bargain it is, sir. <laughs> well? Bob Phillips. He's your man, Mr. Newton. Merely a pawn shop. Aye, but what lies behind it, eh? People come and go every hour of the night. How do you know of all this? I have my sweet ways. Are your men ready? Yes. Uh, Mr. Newton, perhaps it might be best if you retire. I am perfectly capable. Bravo, sir. Let us proceed then. Now, once inside, you make for the back room. The stash will be there. The door's locked. Not for long. Here, give me the axe. Now! In fact, I did take the wise advice of Mr. Haynes and absent myself somewhat from the ensuing battle. Gibson was like a berserk as we cut through to the back room. A delivery of coining materials had been in progress and the villains concerned fought hard. I observed Mr. Haynes to acquit himself nobly. My own men valiant enough, some of the criminals captured, some escaped. And that left but one man. Damn your eyes, I'll kill you all! <laughs> Too many of us, Bob! Yeah, you the biggest rogue! On the side of the angels now! Drop an eighth man or I'll chop you apart! Damn, try me! I would advise you to do as yeah. bid, sir! Damn, kiss it, pretty boy! Cut them down! Wait! Move aside, all of you! Yeah. Sir, yeah. for God's sake, keep your distance! I calculate a different probability. Now, sir, here we are like two adjacent planets. Planets? I'll kill you, Dade. Should you do so, an iron officer of the Crown, you'll be hung, drawn and quartered. That is while still alive. You will be disemboweled and your innards displayed before you, followed by burning of same. And only then will you be hung. Is such your desire? I'll be hung anyway. Well, that depends. What do you want from me? I wish to converse. In private. All right. Damn you. Drop the knife, please. Mr. Haynes, manacle this man and take him to Newgate Prison. I'd pay for some holding cells there. Put your hands out, sir. Hey, I love that pocket watch. You stole it from me. Liar! Get him off to Newgate. Yes, sir. Come along with your man. I'm glad to have him back, sir. He stole it from me. I'm sure. The last act, gentlemen. Coining equipment and apparatus. Destroy it all. Are you sure, sir? It's good quality. Destroy it. Axe and hammer. Do not cease until each piece is no bigger than a particle of light. I am sending a message to all counterfeiters. Begin! Sleep well, Mr. Phillips? Better than most. To be poor in Newgate is to be dead mutton. No, oh, sir. The jailers must be bribed, sir. Otherwise you share a cell with 30 other fellas and no sanitation. A typhus soon follows. You said we talk private. Mr Haynes is very private. I have a proposition. Take or leave. Say your piece. You supply counterfeiters. 
Your knowledge is therefore profound. So, give me names, and you might go free. Will betray my own kind. As they would you. Take or leave. I will not ask again. <sighs> I'll take. Names. Mr. Haynes here will write them down. As part of my profession. Emmanuel Quested. My name? We have information, sir, that your house is dedicated to false coining and that you recently bought merchandise for that very purpose. I'm a respectable man at my Sunday lunch with my good wife. Have an appetite for both. <laughs> Begin at the cellars, Mr. Gibson. Aye. Damned outrage. If mistaken, I shall be covered in the ashes of contrition, sir. Excuse us. I haven't even cut the roast. Poor Mr. Quested. He never did get to eat the roast. Lamb, I believe. Evidence was found of false coining, and he ended up in the cells under interrogation. For the first time, I tasted the fruits of criminal investigation, and I found it, strangely, to my liking. <laughs> Mr. Newton has put a cat amidst the pigeons. His men are all over the city. Yes. A friend of mine was taken in Mother Wiseborn's house of pleasure. How so? He used a false sovereign to pay his bill of fare. Picked up at the tavern, I suppose. One place leads to the other. Newton's men arrived. Luckily, a certain Mr. Haynes was on hand to dispel suspicion. This friend, not yourself by any chance? My sights are higher. Uh, Newton's pretty little niece, for instance? How do you come by that? In the coffee houses, everyone watches everyone else. A city of spies. Well, Mary, here we are again. You pretty as a May bug. <laughs> Me crafty like a fox. Surprised you show your face. Why well, should I not? Informers everywhere. <laughs> Mr. Newton of the Mint has grown teeth. You're not worried? Why should I be? You're a heartless swine, Albert. Uh, I traded everything in my time. I pissed pot profit. Sold medicine to keep the plague at bay. Watchers with no guts in them. Exotic toys from Italy to please the ladies. Gift of the gab. You've never lost it. Right. One last piece of the jigsaw. Be here shortly. Then I start producing. Best quality, but worn little at the edges, so it looks as if it's been in many pockets. How many days spread? Three. Full time. You and your girls shift a power of coin. Put a sovereign on a small purchase, a pocket to change. Eh? Do it again and again. And once it's known for sure that the coin will pass, you'll be selling it on? Mm -hmm. To my dear confederates. They'll buy it by the barrel full. <laughs> That's the plan. Makes sense. Oh, here comes your little dog. Got your pocket watch back, Albert. Looks nice. <sighs> Cost me. Sit down. Well... Where are they? What? The dies. Where are they? Not here. What? Talk <laughs> sense. Newton's men have been round all the master engravers. Warning, if they're found to be connected in false coin, they swing on the rope. No mercy. So? Our man Francis Taylor had made the dies, but he was afeard. He burnt them. What? Your plan just went up in smoke, Albert. This man Newton could get on my bad side. What do we do now? We find other dies. How? That's my business. Uncle? What? What is it? You fell asleep in front of the fire. Oh. Did I? Most unusual. Must be tired. A man at the front door wishes to talk with you. His name? Chandler, he tells me. Albert Chandler. A nice house you have, Mr. Newton. Well appointed. Why are you here, Mr. Chandler? I'd like to clarify matters. Clarify? Yes. You've been asking round. My name. I seek out counterfeiters. That's what I wanted to clear. 
Who told you such? Bob Phillips. Not your concern. But it is, sir. My name is being blackened. I don't like that. And you've no proof. Bob Phillips has a grudge against me. He's a low type. Who sold you coining equipment? <laughs> is that his story? Well, I never. I have investigated your history, Mr Chandler. A swindler. A thief. A rogue. You are a ruthless, evil man. I am an artist, sir. In your own eyes, perhaps. I trained in metal. If I wanted, if I wished, I could produce good as the real thing. If I wished. Is that a threat? As previously stated, sir, you have no proof. <laughs> Don't even know where I live, do you? Whereas here I am in your house, and what a pretty little niece you have. Be careful, Mr Chandler. Well, I best be on my way. Great deal of business on hand. I now know your face, sir. I will not forget it. A handsome creature, am I not? Good night. Good night, sir. God bless. Damned impertinence. I believe it was more in the nature of a challenge. How so? Mr Chandler has an exalted opinion of his prowess. Regards himself as my equal. <laughs> Absurd idea. In the world we inhabit, perhaps not. He came to look me in the face. A declaration of intent. Ah! I warned you. Corruption everywhere. Mr Miller, explain yourself. Robbed. Two engraving dice. Taken. <gasps> From the mint. That's not possible. I warned you. Show me, if you please, the scene of the crime. I found it so when I started first shift in the coining rooms. A double lock on the iron cupboard. Burst open. How could they get in? There are guards on all the tower gates. The guards can be bribed. But the mint's own doors were not forced. No, but heavy bonded. Near impossible to break. The noise would attract attention. Hmm. Therefore they had keys. How is that possible? Thomas Neal possessed a set. Yet the cupboard lock was forced. Only myself and two other craftsmen possess a key to that lock. What dies were stolen? Half and full sovereign. One of each. A counterfeiter's dream. Mr Chandler will be a happy man. You think him the cause? Almost certain, sir. And however it occurred, he had help from within the Royal Mint. There. Uh, feast your eyes on that sovereign, Jack. Beautiful. A work of art. Tomorrow, Mary and the girls will spread them like gold dust. And then we'll sell it on by the bucket load. The dies? How'd you get them, Albert? My little secret. I have a few other things up my sleeve for Mr Newton. Back to work, my boys. Idleness is the root of all evil. <laughs> Sir, there was nothing in the house. What, nothing? And we've enraged the good folk therein. <sighs> Mr. Gibson, Sir. you supplied this address. I was told wrong. Wrong? We pay you good money. Watch yourself, pretty boy. That is quite enough. Our number are stretched, sir. We've rousted out the taverns. Nothing. No sign of the dice. We must find them, Mr. Haynes. There's no trace of Chandler, and we risk a riot if we break into more houses without reason. The master of the Royal Mint is a rogue. He is accused so by this broadside. The Mint opens its portals to the very sinners it is supposed to prosecute. Decent folk cower in their beds while Newton's men break down doors and windows to persecute the innocent. We are taxed from cradle to grave. And now he makes mockery of the sacred right of an Englishman whose home must be his castle. So, Isaac Newton rests in a den of thieves at the Royal Mint and then goes back to his nice little house in German Street and laughs in your faces. Ask him where the dyes of the Royal Mint are. Sold to the highest bidder. A welter of accusation, Isaac. Who would believe such calumnies? The Tories, for one. Are they not the authors of this? I have in mind another source. Is it true, as regards the dies? There was a robbery. And? I have yet to find the culprit. I would wish you to solve this mystery, Isaac. These rumours will spread like the plague. 
Stay where you are! Isaac, don't be a fool! I have no fear of a rabble, and I have my firearm here! I'm at your back, sir! Wait! The pair of you! Run and be damned! Run, you cowards! Nothing like a bullet to hasten the heels. Is that the fire tongs, Catherine? All I could find. And what do you have there, sir? A throwing knife. For falling apples? Anything that comes to mind. My God! You resemble a brace of pirates! <laughs> <laughs> My men will guard the house from now on. Catherine, you must be careful. You are vulnerable. I am not a wilting lily, sir. Uh, no, 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 not at all, but... I know little of women, Charles, but when their blood is up, it is time to retire. Best we all do so. Tomorrow may well be a day of reckoning. Sir, I heard about the attack last night. Catherine, is your family safe? Uh, yes. And yours? Uh, I, I, I do not master your meaning, sir. Delivered this very morning. A message of sorts. For a thief, look no further than your own man, Haynes. His father was a counterfeiter who cut his own throat for shame. A dirty, lying dog. Is this true? Not all. But in some fashion. Clarify, if you will, sir. My father was a weak man who fell by the wayside. And? As a boy, I witnessed the fall. Death? By his own hand? An engraver of good talent, but too often in the taverns. He was prevailed upon to forge some dyes. It was discovered, and before his arrest, he chose otherwise. Hmm. Why conceal this? It was in the past. And now it is the present. So the reason you knew the world of the tavern and false coining so well is that you had once been part of it. If your trust in me has been impaired, I will relinquish my post at once, sir. I judge on observable facts, Mr. Haynes. So far, I have seen nothing to support these allegations. We shall proceed as usual. There. All count it, so don't get greedy. I know my part. You can go now, little dog. <laughs> One day, you and I will have a reckoning, Mary Doherty. No, you haven't got the pith. Goodbye. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, girls. We look respectable, we act respectable, we spread the gospel. <laughs> Sir, the woman by the linen stall, you see her? Tall of stature? Yes. Passed a sovereign coin at three different booths for small items. Shoreditch Market sells high and low. This could be our chance, sir. How so? One of our men, Jiggy Daunt, recognised the face. She looks well enough, but may have other professions. Then John Gibson would know her, surely. He's not shown his face this day. You must have hurt his feelings. <laughs> Jewellery now she buys. Trinkets. A half-sovereign past. Who is our best pursuant? Jeb Albright. Small like a mouse. Jeb is to follow her. All night if it has to be. Once she's left the market, we can reclaim the coin's past. She's moving into the crowd. Set it in motion. Yes, sir. Good luck charm, sir. What? Uh, yes. Uh, take this coin. It's a true one. Bites well. Now, would you like a horseshoe or a jumping cow, sir? <laughs> you will never make a craftsman, Mr. Haynes. I'm a mathematician. No, not we all. Ah, finally. I've broken this coin in two, see? See the contents? You may have it essayed, but it is not pure silver. A mishmash. Omnium gatherum. Oh, here's her sister sovereign. Catch. Oh, wait, good. 
Edge is fair. Genuine, you might believe. Catch. Break it, if you will. Oh, I'll attempt so. Wait. Yes. Ah, it is the same. False coin. Mr. Ames, Jeb here. So was the judge, sir. I bear great tidings. Whoever you are, the door is locked. Oi! Every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, madame. You're Isaac Newton. Devil on earth. Is that my reputation? How did you get a key? I bribed the tavern keeper. Oh, what a dirty swine. My colleague, Mr. Haynes. We bring you a chance to slip the rope. A slender chance. You're funning me, sir. All your crew have been arrested and reclined at Newgate. They've confessed. You're a liar. They wouldn't say a word. Correct. But you must make up for that. Mary Doherty, you are known, you've been witnessed, and look at you now. Up to your neck in culpability. Name your terms. Albert Chandler. I want him in my hands. Is that so? If I give you, the girls and I go free? Within the bounds of possibility. But you'll have to testify in court. Never liked the man anyway. He did me wrong. Then enlighten us, Mistress Doherty. And enlighten us she did. A certain Jack Carter, Chandler's little dog, she called him, was to arrive late evening and pick up the genuine coin that they'd gleaned for false. This he did. A small, rat-like fellow with two companions. They loaded the coin into a coach and off they went. Our own carriage, loaded to the gunnels with our men, followed. The roads were pitch black, but by good chance it was a highwayman's moon. A horseman! What? A horseman just went past us. Supper time, perhaps? What does the sign say? Egham, three miles. Surely not long now. Shortly, Carter's coach stopped up ahead at a house that stood alone on the outskirts of the village. The malefactors, laden heavy with coin, rushed inside. Right, men. Take no prisoners. Crack a skull if need be. You were thirst for blood, Mr. Haynes. <laughs> I have him, sir! In my hands! Bring a light. Let me see. Oh, this is not Chandler. You'll never catch him. A great pity, Mr. Garter. You must take his place on the rope. That's a dirty trick. Tell me what you know. Nothing. Go to hell. You will die like a dog, sir. If your neck doesn't break, you hang there till you choke. Uh, all right, all right. Like the men here, they said someone rode up at the door. Chana spoke with him, came back, took the dies, and then they were gone. The rider that went past our coach, sir. Yes, how unfortunate. He never catched Chandler. Too clever. He beats you all. A night of disenchantment. At the least, we've destroyed his plans, his whole... Adventure. Chandler still has the dies. Here we are, sir. German Street. Home, sweet home. Yeah. I'll see you in the morning, Mr. Haynes. Wait. Where are the men? What? They should be on guard outside the door. Catherine? Catherine! Where in God's name are the men? Oh. Catherine! The house is empty. It's not possible. Sir, a note here, your name. 54 Shoreditch Lane, come alone, God bless. Shoreditch. This is as far as you travel, Mr. Haynes. A foolhardy move, sir. My decision? I could bring reinforcements. Catherine's life is at stake. I go it alone. Now leave!
Good evening, T.K. Mr. Gibson, what a surprise. I heard in the tavern Mary Doherty was taken. <laughs> and to ride like hell to Eggerman back. Where is my niece? Uh, she's in the house with company. Then you must get out of my way. Search your top to bottom first, and then I'm behind you, this gun at your back. You are scum, Gibson. Well, well, the pretty boy. I knew your father. Weak as water, like yourself. I ordered you to leave, sir. I disobeyed, Mr. Newton. Stand aside, Gibson. Oh, aye. Come on, fire away. Let's see who's the better man. <laughs> Mr. Haynes! Mr. Haynes, you have blood, sir. Ah, uh, a flesh wound only. <clears throat> Gibson? Between the eyes. Uh, Very mathematical. I must leave you now. Mm. Good luck, sir. At the top, Mr. Newton. Door is open. Oh, come in, sir. You are welcome. Uncle, I'm so sorry. Are you unharmed? Yes. Tied and bound, but still pretty. We are due a reckoning, Mr. Chandler. Indeed we are. Have this gun made special. Shoot straight. Your friend, Mr. Gibson, is dead. What a blessing. Oh, what a pity. He was to come with me to Birmingham. Never mind. I still have the dice. Set up all over again. I might forestall that. You've done enough damage. You would kill in cold blood. That's the best kind. <laughs> then I'll deal with your pretty little niece. Go to hell, sir. Do you remember, Catherine, the apple and the tree? Why, yes. I would climb the tree, drop the apple and... Say you... your prayers, Newton. When I succeeded... You would scream like a banshee. Yes, like this. Ah! Oh, what in God's name? Ah! Ah! You stuck me. A thrown knife. Scottish Dirk. I really missed. You never missed. Adam's apple this time. Ah! I... Ah! Shot the floor, sir. No harm done. Ah! Ah! This blade has many uses. Excuse Mr. Chandler's blood. Easily done. Help me up, please. Yeah. Good as new. Is he dead? I believe so. Then let us go home, Uncle. A genius, to be sure, Isaac, but I had never reckoned you a man of action. Mentioned in my third law of motion. Are you sure of this present cause? The only way to stop counterfeiting in its tracks is to recoin the whole currency, every last sovereign, every last groat. An impossible task, some might say. A matter of calculation. If you might open the door, Chancellor. Certainly. Let us enter the lion's den. Of course, the parliamentary committee howled like so many jungle behemoths, but the noise did not perturb me. When common sense takes place of prejudice, a rarity, mark you, for politicians, they will come round to my way of thinking. That left me one last task. A task I did not relish. You work late, Mr Miller. Someone has to. Do you know a woman? Mary Doherty. I do not, sir. She desires my approval to save her from the gallows and offered me information. What's it to do with me? On her rounds of recent times, she witnessed a certain Albert Chandler in a quiet little tavern talking to a man. And so? Money was exchanged. Let's hope the coin was true. The man she described might well have been you, sir. How so? The forefinger on his right hand was cut to the stump. That means nothing. I can bring her here. Or you to her. Please do not lie, Mr. Miller. This is hard enough. I have a granddaughter. Ill to the bone. The money was for her. Chandler knew of this? Gibson knew. You gave the keys to the door of the mint, but they had to break the cupboard lock to make it seem like you were not involved. Yes. You betrayed a trust. I'm ready to face the consequence. A rarer man anxious to embrace the rope. 
I have little to live for. Do nothing untoward until you hear from me. Now get back to work, sir. That night I held a supper party. Mr. Haynes, still bruised. Mr. Montague, avid for cake. Catherine like a firefly, a bright, glittering presence. Both men were lost in admiration. I fear a rivalry one day. Thus nature weaves her web. As regards Mr. Miller, shall I deliver him up to the rope or redemption? I am to decide, not unlike God. In Isaac Newton, Master of the Mint by David Ashton, Isaac Newton was played by William Gaminara, Hopton Haynes by Gunnar Cawthry, Catherine Barton by Kerry Goodison, Charles Montague by Nicholas Tizard, Albert Chandler, Jonathan Forbes, John Gibson, Michael Nardoni, Jack Carter, Ryan Early, Mary Doherty, Lauren Cornelius, Elliot Miller, Sean Murray, and Richard Vernon by Gerard McDermott. Other parts were played by the cast. Isaac Newton, Master of the Mint, was a BBC Scotland production directed by Bruce Young. Isaac Newton, Nemesis, by David Ashton, Episode 1. We have asked you to attend once more, Mr Newton, because some of our committee harbour doubts as regards your proposal. It is the only solution. Further clarification, if you please. Oh. I'm not in the habit of repeating myself, Mr Carey. Mr Newton has more than proved his case. I am not so easily satisfied, Chancellor. Very well. Let us leave satisfaction to those who desire it and deal with the facts. To all intents and purposes, our country is bankrupt. False coiners and the previous contemptible management of the Royal Mint <sighs> have combined to wreak economic havoc. Is that sufficient clear? An exaggeration, surely. No! A fact. Scarce a coin in this country is the value it purports to be. The edges shaved, the silver corrupted. Mr Newton has risked life and limb to fight this uh, corruption. Thank you, Chancellor. And I yet survive. However, counterfeiters wait in the shadows and our enemies abroad also wait. They know how weak we are. You are the appointed master of the Royal Mint. I will not be blamed for the sins of others. I am not the Lamb of God. We must recoin the entire currency. Every scrap of silver melted down, new minted and stamped. Edges milled to prevent shaving and adulteration. Only then reissued. There is no option. I challenge that assertion. Mathematics is an exact science, sir. The figures do not lie. Financial catastrophe is not an assertion. It is a fact, like mortality. Since I spoke to you some weeks ago... I have structured a program of how to approach what will be a huge undertaking. I will put every ounce of my energy and ability into making it succeed. I await your decision. But I warn you, gentlemen, time is on the march, not on our side. His Majesty wages war in France. Our troops must be paid, Chancellor. The money will be borrowed, Secretary Vernon. Further strain on our resources. My decision. I will stand by it. What is the verdict, sir? Politicians are incapable. Of what? Intelligent decision. You're not happy, sir, I can tell. I would rather dog some counterfeiter armed to the teeth up a dark alley in the depths of Hoban than deal one second with a politician. A duplicitous breed, with very few exceptions. Mr Newton... We have won the day. Ah, you may proceed. Finally. Mr Carey has resigned the committee. One less idiot. I need not tell you, sir. My position in this government depends upon your success. Another burden to carry. Mr Montague. I must return. 
Business to discuss? By all means, discuss. We may converse later, but proceed. Is Lord Halifax one of your exceptions, sir? Charles Montague. I taught him at Cambridge. Such an education may yet be his salvation. Is that you, Thomas? Who else? I don't know. Some sly boots under the bed, then? No, just me on top. Belle Russell, you look like a harlot. Don't you dare insult me, sir. Huh? Your mistress, a class above? <laughs> You're an impertinent hussy. And your face is like a beetroot. My blood is hot. Appetite? Temper. Come, sit with me. I'll tell you a story. <sighs> Lean back. Close your eyes. Now... Once upon a time, mm. there was a sweet young lass who came all the way to London from Newcastle to seek her fortune. In a brothel. Mother was born. In the Strand, where she found lodging mm. right enough. And there she would have lain till the cows come home, save for a kind visiting gentleman. Who set you up in these rooms. Mm. Cost me a damned fortune. Worth every penny. <laughs> <laughs> what ails you, sir? Oh... I was first Lord of the Treasury, favourite of the King, and I was accused of some damned conspiracy and His Majesty could not protect me. Now I skulk around to the Whig rank and file. Oh, you'll rise again. I have enemies. Who are they? Oh, Charles Montague, Chancellor of the Exchequer. I want what he holds. And destroy the man. Oh, a sweet temptation. If we don't like somebody in Newcastle, we just shove them off the cliff. <laughs> Into the abyss, eh? <laughs> Any hole in the ground. Does he stand alone? Well, behind him lurks Isaac Newton. Destroy them both. Oh, easier said than done. You are a strong man. And you... Give me that strength. I want what's best for you. Destroy them. Take your rightful place. I can do it. It might take time, but I can do it for king and country. It's all very well. Obviously not, Mr. Miller, from the tone of your voice. It's a thing impossible. Nothing is impossible. The amount of silver pouring into this place would be like Noah's flood. Noah survived the flood. Uh, Mr. Haynes, would you do me the honour of going into my office and laying out the financial ledgers? They may need some perusal. Uh, yes, sir, of course. At once. Mr. Miller, you are of great value to me. Without your skill, the wheels of the Royal Mint would not turn. Hardly turn in here. You owe me a considerable favour, sir. I'll do that. The counterfeiter bribed you to unlock our doors. He hung by the neck, of course. I could have done the same. I am in your debt. And now I desire my pound of flesh. The books are displayed, sir. You will work, like myself, night and day. And together we shall achieve the impossible. I will give of my best. Provide me with a note of any extra men or machinery that we may require. It'll be considerable. So was the Principia. Best be about your business, sir. Aye, right. Oh, oh, one other thing. I've been observing the men at work, and to my mind their practice might stand improvement. How do you come to that? Time versus motion. My field of study. Good luck to you. Mr Newton, sir. Duty calls. Indeed it does, Mr. Haynes. Let battle commence. What life did I lead before? Cambridge. Natural philosopher Isaac Newton. Hailed by the world as a genius. Yet as the years passed on, tortured by incapacity of achievement, dwindling of power, and an overwhelming sense of failure... And now, 
I'm about to throw myself into a, a maelstrom of treachery and mendacity. Yet I find that I am curiously enlivened. <laughs> Let battle commence indeed. I am more than ready. Rip him to bits, Jupiter! Do your damnedest! <laughs> I win! Hey up, you pot belly dunghills. Jamie Wilde thanks you, gentlemen. Your dog is still alive. Take him home. Wilde, a woman wants your ear. What kind of woman? It's Archer Chell. She's in the booth. By the curtain. Thank you, Silas. Bind up Jupiter's wounds, will you? He's all I've got at the moment. Yeah, good old dog. Kills when you're chilling. How may I serve you, madam? Get that look out your eye for a start. Appreciation of your charm. Save it. I have a proposition for you, Mr Wilde. You know me? I know of you. And what do you know? They say you're ruthless, guts in your brains. But no one knows your history. I fell from on high, like Lucifer. You're a false coiner. Alas, no more. Isaac Newton has seen to that. His spies are all over London. And if you're caught, you dance the Tyburn jig. Now... What do you desire from a man of my stamp? You don't smell as bad as I thought. I thank you for the compliment. How would you like... vengeance? <laughs> Upon whom? God? The devil? The hanging judge? Isaac Newton. Cut him down. Is there profit in it? Most certainly. Then, my dear, we may kiss fingers. North, as always, will be the problem. <laughs> How do you convince a Yorkshireman to part with his silver? <laughs> At the point of a gun, I would say. Uncle Isaac! Supper will be burnt! What is for supper? Fish! Salmon, to be precise, sir, and I crave sustenance. You were born hungry, Chancellor. Typical politician. <laughs> he should be up here, at work, with us. Yeah. The attractions of my niece outweigh the cares of state. Still, duty above all. Huh. So, what say you, sir? Burnt fish is to be avoided. I bow to your superior wisdom. The Tory broadsides have described you, mm. Uncle, as a fanatic bent upon destruction. Mm. <laughs> they would, of course, recognise fanaticism better than most. This salmon is exemplary, Catherine. Mm. Mm. Certainly not from the Thames. No, it's full of dead bodies. <laughs> Rats, mostly. Indeed. Rattus aquaticus. And what say the coffee house perts about me? Oh, Mr Dryden does not admire King William. Oh, am I tarred with the same brush? Latet anguis in erba. There's a mm. snake in the grass. <laughs> you study Latin, Mr Haynes? I'm not uh, completely proficient. Mr Haynes is a mathematician. Mm. He also guards my back impeccably. Like Cerberus. Well, I fail to see the resemblance. Cerberus is a three-headed dog. Uh, who guards Pluto, lord of the underworld. <laughs> I meant merely the function. Ah. Uh, I expect you do rule the underworld, sir, and I do watch your back. Well said. Yes. But for how long do I rule? May one indulge in a pipe of tobacco, Miss Barton? One may, Mr Montague, in the garden. Try not to offend the roses. My pride and joy, sir. What's for pudding? Orange cake. Well, that will please King William. <laughs> Mr Haynes and I plan to eat the entirety. <laughs> do you not wish to join them, sir? Oh, I prefer the present company. <laughs> may I help you clear table for Catherine? If you so wish, of course. I hope it did not cause offence. Uh, what, if you please? Being compared to a three-headed dog. I like dogs. They're decent creatures, unless harmed, and then they can turn. Yeah, not unlike humanity. I suppose so. Do you admire Mr Montague? He is amusing. Yeah, I lack that quality. <laughs> you guard my uncle's back. I hold that above all things. How is it they live in such harmony, the billions of stars? When most men can scarce pass a minute without declaring war. 
Thomas Aquinas. If nothing else, sir, your memory holds true. Mm. Do you believe in God, Mr. Montague? Of course. Let us hope he is on our side. Hope springs eternal. It would be one thing to amass the silver, quite another to bring it home. Armed guards on every wagon, I assume. To be sure. All the routes will be kept secret, save for some trusted men. I'm one of those. You are my employer. As long as it lasts. More knives at my back than Julius Caesar. Have you indulged sufficient, sir? Smoked like a herring. <laughs> How fares the orange cake? Mr. Haynes dismembers it this very instant. And I'd best rescue the poor beast. <laughs> Charles is such a dear person. Let us pray he is not dismembered also. Surely Mr. Haynes would not be so bloodthirsty. Hmm. You do not realise what a trail of devastation you leave, Catherine. How so? By being yourself. Are you troubled, Uncle? I am always troubled. Nonsense. Now come and sample my orange cake. Ah. <laughs> Two main furnaces are at work full tilt and we've hardly begun. Therefore we must build another. Where? The smelting room. Space enough there. What if I told you, Mr. Miller, that the mimp was capable of producing 15,000 pounds of coin per week? Why, sir, you were mad. And if I said treble that? Beyond madness. Follow me upstairs, if you will, sir. Let us investigate time versus motion. Oh. He's not mad, Mr. Miller. Merely a natural philosopher. At the moment, two rolling mills, four millers, twelve horses, uh, two horse keepers, three cutters, two flatters, eight sizers, one kneeler, three blanchers, two markers. Correct? So far. And all of this moving silver from the smelting rooms to feed the coining press. Six men to each press, while one brave fellow feeds blanks into the striking chamber. And loses a finger, as I did myself. Accidents will happen. Well, you weren't there to feel the pain. I have identified the necessary rhythm of effort that will produce maximum return. The press must stamp out coin 55 times a minute. 55? But a little less than beats the human heart. What if the heart bursts? Broken hearts are to be avoided. On that somewhat cryptic remark from Mr. Haynes, the die was cast. From that time, the Royal Mint ran to a different beat. Of course, Mr. Miller shook his head, but I suspect it was more habit than anything else. Over the following months, the collection of silver began all through England. Not without enormous resistance, and only the threat of their old silver coins being regarded as worthless currency persuaded the people to accept their weighted government receipt. In the north, it was worse, with the looming, compounded difficulty of transportation. But during all of this, I was cognizant of the dangerous truth contained in my third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Not bad provender for a peasant. I live to serve. More wine? <sighs> Blood of the grape. <laughs> a fine capon. The juice all over thy chin. Oh, it can be licked away. You have a napkin for that, Thomas. Never guess to look at you. Picture of innocence, eh? Virtue has its own reward. <laughs> Hooked you out of Mother Wisebourne's before anyone else put a mark down. More or less. Set you up, a lady of leisure. More or less. Yet I know nothing of your life. Nothing to know? Your indulgence is my desire. Oh. Mistress, does that alone satisfy you? If I were your wife, first thing you'd do is deceive me. Oh, a palpable hit! <laughs> How are your plans faring? <sighs> Not long now. Come, sit by me. Your humble slave, sir. I have gathered a strong body of disaffected souls. Montague is not popular. Newton was. When? And how? Newton attempts the impossible. It will fail, and then we strike. Montague falls, I take his place. Chancellor. How will it fail? Well, the silver will be heavy. A long haul from the north. 
Bad roads, weather foul, winter closing in, never be accomplished. Even better if we knew the road's taken. How so? Trees cut down to block, signs changed, horses put to fear by stones, carriage wheels broken. In the darkness, anything might happen. I cannot be associated with such. Newton has many enemies. All they would need is a time and place. How do you know his enemies? I start with you and move downwards. Oh, sharks of the street, mayhaps. Interested parties. The committee must be given details of the planned routes. I have friends there. And friends can be useful. But I must not be implicated. Of course not. Keep your nose clean. <laughs> Why bother yourself with all this? The higher you rise, the more I reflect your glory. Now, shall we seal the bargain, my lord? <coughs> Damnation! I warned you, not my fault, Mr Miller. Oh, bloody animal! It fell over, I did nothing. What's going on, Mr Miller? One of the horses! Gave up the gun! Can it be safe? On his last legs, Mr. Ains. Wait there. Poor old fella. Either die on a job or it's a knacker's yard. Needs to be put out of its misery. Like the rest of us. I'll do it. This gun is meant to guard your back, sir, but I suppose a bullet has many uses. Better than a spike through the skull. Stand aside, if you will. All for the greater good, eh, Mr. Newton? No mercy. your dog think it's doing? He likes females. Would he like a kick in the cods? Jupiter, here. Sit. Gets carried away sometimes. Like his master. What you've told me. Sweet music. You find the roots, I'll do the rest. Do you have the men? Silas can gather me some hogs in armour. The wagons must be stopped. Newton disgraced. Dishonoured. Mm. Of course... Some silver may go missing. That's not my concern. What is your concern, Belle Russell? You know my name. One of my young lads recognised you. Mother Wiseborn's house of pleasure. He wouldn't be a client. Delivering. You disappeared from there, I'm told. I got a better offer. Hmm. So, why do all this? It suits me that he's wrecked, I can get back to my lawful business. But you, what's your concern? A matter of obligation. <laughs> I am obliged to no one. You're a curious man. Am I? You carry a stick, but you don't limp. My mother gave it me. Your mother? Just before she died. It has a snake within. <laughs> huh. You see? The blade rests against your pretty neck. Italian steel. I'm sure it has a keen edge. Sharper than your tongue. But not my brain pan. <laughs> so, we wait. Until the moment's ripe. It would be good to have someone in the mint. A spy of sorts. Someone on the inside. To let us know when their guts pull tight? Exactly so. I'd be willing to pay. I may know just the man. Have you finished calculations, sir? More or less. I'm yet only some way through. However, you must remember, Mr. Haynes, that I am held to be a genius. <laughs> of course. How could I forget? Hmm. We must augment the number of horses. Yes? So the workload is less strenuous. I'll inform Mr. Miller. Let's do so. I say this not out of kindness, Mr. Haynes. Not at all. Time and motion, sir. Kindness can often be mistaken for fallibility. Never in your case, surely. <laughs> Was that a witticism, Mr. Haynes? I'm not famed for such. But Mr. Miller will be pleased. As regards what? The horses. Oh, Mr. Miller is really pleased. Well, that's my part complete. Enough. 
We can plan no more. Tomorrow we send out the riders. Tomorrow it all begins. From the north, London bound. A note from Mr. Montague. Well, a B.A. do, I trust. <laughs> that would have another destination. The war in France fares badly. The king demands more money. Speed is imperative. Imperative? Oh, political usage. It signifies my back is to the wall. Mind if I join you? Would it make a difference? <sighs> Buy your drink, sir. I've had sufficient. Good when a man knows his limits. Your dog's seen better days. He likes a scrap. Bulldog breed. Look at those ears. To know better at your age. What's his name? Jupiter. King of the gods. <laughs> Fancy that then. King of the gods. Rarely lets people touch. We have a friend in common, Mr Miller. Do we? Albert Chandler. He's dead. Agreed. I saw him swing at Tyburn. Big crowd, families out for the day. Children love to see it hanging. Albert always liked big crowds, but not this time. Judging by the look on his face. No, I wasn't there to see the fun. Albert told me you had no great love for Isaac Newton. Well, I worked for him. That means nothing. You did my old friend a favour. Did I? You could do similar for me. It didn't do him much good. <laughs> True enough. But I'm a different quality. Are you in the same business? That I am. Jamie Wilde, at your service. What kind of favour? Nothing much. Say, it went bad, with all these shipments. Oh, no, nothing about it. Of course not. But say the men lose heart if things go wrong. Newton makes mistakes. All starts to go to the devil. People fall out, begin to grumble. Any little bit of gossip, any little bit of trouble caused. Be paid well. Who'd pay me? Not you. No. Someone else. Rich pickings. Like to meet them. You will. If you have something to sell. Uncle Isaac. Well, you must close the windows before the house takes flight. I like storms. Elemental. Nature shows her power, and nothing else can tame her save God who created such. Please, close the window. No lightning or thunder. Pity that. Mm. I'm sure they will arrive. Do not encourage wicked weather. The devil has enough mischief on hand. True. The wagons begin their journey south tomorrow. I should be praying for calm. On, on bended knees. How long will this last, I wonder? Weeks, I'm told. And how came you by such knowledge? An old woman at the market. <laughs> A witch, perhaps? <laughs> she sells cheese. When the weather is bad, her bones suffer. The sharper the pain, the longer it will endure. And you believe her? No, she is seldom mistaken. Well, what happens when the sun shines? <laughs> She dances a hornpipe. <laughs> <laughs> I've left some bread and cheese there with a glass of wine. I thank you kindly. Since you hide away in your study, I must climb the stairs. Cheese promotes bad dreams. Well, then don't eat it. Catherine? Yes? I'm sorry you have to attend such a fanatical anchorite. Family anchorite. What would I do without you? May find out one day. Good night, Uncle. Good night. Indeed. I would be lost without my Catherine, and yet I cannot, with all good conscience, expect her to be always at my beck and call. Lord Montague plies his wit, and Mr. Haynes lurks in vain behind the orange cake. When I first arrived in German Street, she was there to greet me. Had written previous that she'd be my housekeeper. She owed me that favor. What had I given to earn such generosity? When she was little, while her parents lived, I used to visit, amuse her with toys I had made. I suppose I, I may have seemed a hero of sorts then, but in German streets, 
I was like a ghost ship, a wreck. I had become enmeshed in a practice that, had it been made public, would have led to my summary execution. Alchemy. The secret heresy. I was tempted to believe that I could solve the mystery of God by the power of my mind. Like Faustus, I broke upon the wheel. Not long now. They'll be hoping to get across the Wandsford Old Bridge and spend the night in the village stables. Two sharp bends before that, though. The wagons will be heavy, road full of mud, slow as treacle in winter. That's when we break some bones. Not until I give the word. As you say, Mr. Wilde. The men ready? To their teeth. Oh, God, hellish night. Perfect for mischief. But that could be done. Wait for the word, Silas. What if the guards resist? Kill them where they stand. <laughs> you say so. In dear old England, killing a man is nothing but stealing silver from those above you. That's what gets you hung by the neck. <laughs> Wait. How is this possible? God knows. Two dead, three men injured, the wagon and shipman gone? The enemy well prepared. They must have known the route. It was carefully mapped to circumvent the main highways. Bridges cannot be evaded, Mr. Newton. And they were waiting. They knew. I'm afraid. We've been betrayed, sir. Yeah. Some madhouse down there. For what reason? Robbery. Roma, all round the city. We can deny it. Not if it's true. Well, how would you know what is true? Your messengers down below. Covered in mud, supped in a beer, bone tired. I asked him, point blank. Oh, he was to say nothing. He did say nothing. But his eyes told a different story. We have been deceived. Send out a party of men at once. Search out their trail and find the wagon. I will do so. If any of our workmen ask, deny it all. How could this be? Well, I'm just a common soul. I wouldn't know. And what am I, Mr. Miller? You're the man high above. Isaac Newton, master of the men. Your responsibility, Mr. Newton. And, and more importantly, where is the purloined silver? Only two at the Royal Mint knew the routes. Myself and Mr. Haynes, upon whom I would trust my life. Someone may have spoken out of turn. Someone did, but not at the Mint. Here. Are you accusing one of our committee of treason? I believe I am, Mr. Vernon. There are no traitors in our ranks, sir. I suggest, Mr. Newton, you look closer to home. And I suggest you investigate. Or I will do it for you. How dare he impugn the honour of the house? A monstrous accusation. He is a brilliant man, but fragile. Then you should not have put your trust in him, Charles. His loyalty to this country is beyond question. It's not his loyalty. It is his judgment that concerns me. And by association, yours. Your boots are muddy, Mr. Wilde. I am a grave digger by trade. Brought your dog a bone. He's a good dog. Have you heard the stories? Oh, I have. Dirty work, eh? What kind of bone is that? Horse. <laughs> I have some testimony that might interest your employer. Tell me. Those that pay here the piper. Tell us you're here with Mary Tempest. Near as a guest, Jamie Wilde. <laughs> Dance as well, does she not? Uh, we all dance to one tune or another. <laughs> <laughs> there was to be no violence. In the darkness, things get confounded. Confounded? Mistaken. You could kill your own father. The silver was stolen. All the better. What? Think of the disgrace. 
Money lost, lives lost, all laid at Newton's door. And Montague shares the disgrace. One beast infects the other. The silver. We'll get it back. Of course, my love. Sooner or later, everything comes back. Oh. Oh, the whole city's full of rumour, like a dog with fleas. Good news spreads fast. Once the Tories get their teeth into this, they'll tear Newton to pieces, like a pack of hounds after a dirty old fox. Then Montague falls and you step over his body. You are such a clever man. I, I have to get back. The house is in uproar. Oh, they smell blood. Tomorrow night, I promise. I hold breath till then. T Thomas, the man who informed you of the roots, he is to be trusted? Digby Lonsdale loves the sound of his own voice. But if questioned... Wouldn't dare. Have to save his own hide. In any case, all fingers will point at the royal mint. <laughs> the blame lies there. As always, you are ahead of me. Tomorrow night, gird your loins. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such fun, and the dish ran away with a spoon. You look like a rich man. Appearances off to sieve, eh? Give me your silver. Not worth the money. Give me or I'll break your bones. This is not an opportune moment, sir. My patience is thin at the best of times. I'll not warn you more. Unless you wish a bullet, my friend. I would advise you to leave. <gasps> what? Sorry, sir. Just a just a bit of fun, no harm meant. You all right, Mr. Newton? Unscathed, Mr. Haynes. Newton, are you? Isaac Newton, robber. In what fashion? All over the streets. You robbed your own wagon of silver. Quite an accomplishment. Dirty thief. Be on your way. The whole world knows! I speak the public. Who's behind all these stories? The enemies. They have them on all sides. I should take more care, sir. I may not always be on hand. Indeed. I trust I do not sound somewhat ungrateful, but may I ask what you're doing in this neighbourhood, sir? I was passing by. Perhaps to protect me? That's what I just accomplished. Correct. Correct. Most appreciated. It was not perchance to call upon my niece. No. Ah, uh, tis far too late. Oh, you could have serenaded her at the window. Oh, it is somewhat damp. I don't sing. Yeah. Well, I'm no blackbird either. Good night, sir. Good night. Oh, Mr. Haynes. Is there any chance that our plans might have been discovered? Triple padlocked inside a sheet iron chest. No chance. Mm -hmm. and there is a strategy behind all this. I'm sure you'll find it. I must consider further. Good night, once more. Tomorrow will be a day of reckoning. Good night. And what are you trying to tell me, my friend? Are you hoping for a change in the weather? There. Nice and private. Where's your dog? At the bar with Silas. I have little time, sir. Please be to the point, sir. Well, I didn't expect a girl. I'm not a girl and I never have been. No word of a lie. To the point. Things are evil at the Mint. Newton is a tyrant. What about the men? Angry. All they get is stories. Gossip, hearsay. They want the truth. The wagon was robbed. True as I breathe. And they say the guards died. They did. Those who work at the Mint respect you. Hard but fair, that's me. You could tell them that they are to be blamed, as traitors. That would bring Bedlam. Nothing wrong with that. Well? It'll cost you. Two gold coins. More if Newton falls. I'll take them. What have you got against old Isaac, eh? Nothing for nosy folk. It must be something. That is not your concern. Just do what you're told. Well, I might even enjoy it. Good night to you. 
follow him. Why? I lack trust. If anything looks wrong, kill him. He knows too much. How so? You talk too much. <sighs> Remind me. Never to get on your bad side. Now that I am no longer constrained by committee, I am free to charge you, sir. Charge me? With what, sir? Putting our great country at risk by following a fool's errand. Gentlemen, please. It was the only solution. It was the advice and resolve of a man not fit to hold office, as you are yourself, sir. Not fit in any way, shape or form to occupy the great and onerous responsibility of Chancellor. Gentlemen, we must remain calm. I stand or fall by Isaac Newton. Then you will fall, sir, to your detriment and resignation. Hold your step, Miller. Jamie Wilde, what are you doing here? I could ask the same. That's Isaac Newton's house. So it is. I follow you. First thing, you come straight here. Well, I, I wanted to ask Newton how things were, so I could tell you. That's a lie. As God is my witness. Don't bring God into it. Bad for the health. More tea, Uncle? Hmm? Oh. No, thank you. Penny for the thoughts. I seek a Judas. Let me attend to that. Please do so. One of your admirers, no doubt. <coughs> Catherine? I'm here! <sighs> Mr. Mr. Miller, he... I, I found him covered in blood. Mr. Miller? Mr. Newton, there you are. What happened, sir? Stab in the guts. Soul stick. Clever. <coughs> Who did this? I tried to help. <coughs> I should have known better. <sighs> I found this uh, in Miller's work desk. An envelope, your name upon it. Isaac Newton, Master of the Mint. Dear Mr. Newton, if you read this, I am most certainly dead, like the old horse. You have been kind to me and I am grateful for that. A man approached me, Jamie Wilde by name, a false coiner. Behind him, someone else. They mean you harm. They think I will betray you, but once is enough. I will try to find who employs Wilde, but it will be a hazard. I owe you that much, though. You are almost as dolorous as I am. A rarity, that. Good luck to you, Elliot Miller. I'm not sure I comprehend. It is between Miller and myself. He died to protect the mint. His blood on Catherine's dress. Poor Catherine. She will be as full of vengeance as I am. We have been betrayed. Lied to, cheated, robbed. Good man has been murdered on my own doorstep. Oh, we now have a name, Jamie Wilde. I will find him. On Montague's committee as a traitor, I will find him also. And they will lead me to those who wish to destroy us. And I will take vengeance. And the recoining? It proceeds. Double the guards. Will Montague accept the cost? He will have no option. And the men? I will address them. Tell them of Miller's fate. Tell them the truth. If they are honest, they will follow. It is not myself these enemies wish to destroy. It is our country. Then we must fight back. Take the field. Attack. And as Mr. Miller once said to me, no mercy. Yes, indeed. No mercy. In Isaac Newton Nemesis by David Ashton, Isaac Newton was played by William Gaminara, Hopton Haynes by Gunnar Cothery, Catherine Barton, Laura Christie, Charles Montague, Rick Warden, 
Elliot Miller, Sean Murray, Thomas Carey, Clive Hayward, Belle Russell, Melody Grove, Jamie Wilde, Will Kirk, and Richard Vernon and Silas by Neil McCall. Other parts were played by the cast. Isaac Newton Nemesis was a BBC Scotland production directed by Bruce Young. Isaac Newton Nemesis by David Ashton, episode two. A man approached me, Jamie Wilde by name, a false coiner. Behind him, someone else. They mean you harm. Elliot Miller left this note for me. Then he died to protect the Royal Mint. We have put our men onto Wilde to watch his every move, but so far, nothing. Am I correct, Mr. Haynes? You are indeed, sir. Counterfeiter lives in the taverns, puts on airs and graces. A fine figure with the ladies, but cut your throat as soon as look at you. Could he have robbed my silver? The country's silver, Chancellor. But could he? Possible. Runs with violent men. Yet we have no proof of anything, murder or robbery. Yes, we need proof. What are you thinking, Catherine? She may not wish to be involved, sir. I am not a piece of bone china, Charles. No, no, of course not. I would not infer... Infer what? Otherwise. Mr Miller died on our doorstep. His blood on my dress, I'm involved. Catherine also has more intelligence than your entire government committee. (laughs) Not much of a compliment, sir. I agree. I object. In any case, what is on your mind, Catherine? When I was a little girl, Uncle Isaac, you visited my parents, do you remember? Yes. Yes, I do. Some animal was killing all your poultry. I applied logic. Gun to hand, you climbed a tree. I was younger then. But first, you tethered two plump hens in a small clearing and waited till night. I thought a fox. But it was your your family cat, Samuel, had a thirst for blood. We put him down, and the hens laid their eggs in peace ever after. You were suggesting something of that measure? To attract... A predator. It might well work. Mm, Thank you, Mr Haynes. At your service, madam. (laughs) A heavy wagon full of silver, say. Lightly guarded, perhaps. A sitting duck. Or hen. How can (laughs) we be sure that Wilde will hear of this? As Chancellor, sir, you are duty-bound to inform details to your government committee. That should do the trick. I resent the implication, Mr Newton. Then leave it so, but do it, if you please. I'm not your pupil now, sir. More's the pity. For the good of the cause, Mr Montague. Mr. Miller must not die in vain. And remember his words, behind Jamie Wilde lies someone else. Splendid lunch. One of your clubs, no doubt. Gentlemen only. Otherwise, you could have been there, my dear. I wouldn't want to, anyhow. (laughs) Why not, pray? Your wife might hear of it. (laughs) True enough. True enough. Oh, splendid. Claret and beef pie. Good English provender. Claret is French. So it is. So it is. Digby Lonsdale and I sank three bottles. The king's health and confusion to the enemy. Mr Lonsdale, your friend in the committee? None other than brought me great news. Oh, not such as? Montague is on his knees. How so? Newton has run out of men to guard the wagons. What about the army? Doesn't trust them. Only his own men. Serves him right, then. They've been forced to send the next shipment with little cover, like a farm cart. <laughs> he must be desperate. <laughs> Can I interest you in a brandy, sir? Oh, my wife would never offer such... Advantage of having a mistress. (laughs) Uh, One more mistake. Montague is finished and I will be Chancellor. That's worth a brandy or two. (laughs) I might even join you. Celebrate. Mm. Oh. Bell Russell. Come up in the world, eh? All the way from Mother Wiseborn's. Yeah. There's times you remind me of the first woman I bedded. Same height, colouring, a serving maid. That's nice. What happened to her? Oh, she was released. Released? 
got above her station. Well, your good health, sir. Uh, uh. Hmm. Now tell me all the gossip from Mr. Lonsdale. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miller, I miss him. No one to complain about the Royal Mint? <laughs> oh, look at me with such ill-disguised lack of respect. That was more reserved for myself, surely. Be careful there! Take father, Mr. Newton! Miller was the only one to make some of this old equipment work. Especially that print machine. A huge beast with a mind of its own. Inanimate but unpredictable. How are the men? Spirits not high, but they persevere. We're working full out with more to come. Mr. Gilchrist, mind on the job, sir! Aye, Mr. Newton! A decent fellow, but not a patch on Mr. Miller. I'm afraid so. Mr. Gilchrist, if I need it, I'll be in my room. Right you are, sir! <sighs> Sorry, sir. A bad night. Did you not sleep well? No. I dreamt I was at the edge of a cliff. Oh. And did you fall? I woke up instead. Very wise of you. You did not um, dream of my niece then. I lack the capacity, sir. Let us therefore consider grim reality. Now, the Chancellor will have told his committee this morning, so by this evening it's safe to assume our enemies will know of forthcoming events. It will not leak from here. Mr. Montague, in a parlous state, enemies at his back. So he keeps telling us. Indeed. I've studied the proposed route of the wagon. It passes through Kent by tomorrow evening. One of the last staging posts is a steep incline two miles before. Perfect for ambush. Our men will be there, of course. As will you and I. But that would be dangerous, sir. I shoot as well as the next man. In the dark, anything might happen. I cannot ask someone to risk their life if I'm not prepared to do the same. Very well. With that in mind, may I inform you, sir, that I intend to keep watch on Jamie Wilde this night. We have men already in position. They do not have my skill. I might say to you, that would be dangerous. Pop calls the kettle black, sir. Besides, I shall be in disguise. When I mooted the idea of recoining the entire currency, I felt it to be the only course. I still feel so, but... I have lost a good man, Elliot Miller, and may lose others. I put those I love at risk. Mathematics is a simple process compared to the labyrinth of human emotions. I left my citadel of law and learning to immerse myself in another world, a world of greed and power, anger, hatred. I hope the outcome is worth the jeopardy. To any action, there is an equal and opposite reaction good and evil. I am loath to consider myself a white knight upon a charger, but I will do my best not to disgrace the purpose of my maker. My dog Jupiter will rip the guts out of your flea-bitten hound. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> no chance. Mr. Wilde, you have a visitor. Tomorrow night, the game is on. Yeah, it's yes, too bloody right. right. Is it my sweet angel, Silas? It is. Yeah, she waits outside. Here, take Jupiter. He's overly fond of her shinbone. Come on, boy. Tomorrow night! Yeah! Yeah! Don't be late, Wild. <laughs> Over here. By the alley. <laughs> All hooded up. Woman of mystery, eh? I have little time. Details of the next shipment. Tomorrow eve. I had some sport planned. Well, you may have a different kind to pursue. Goodbye. Wait. When do we spend all this silver? When I dance on Newton's grave. <laughs> Stay a while. His men are everywhere. I could follow you a distance for safety. No, you might be watched. What's that? Nothing. I could send Silas. Yes. He can dog me to the crossroad, but no further. Hurry. Wait. I demand payment. Of what kind? Like this. Stabbed a man in the guts for you. You must wait. Tomorrow night, after we take the silver and hide it by the docks, I have a secret little room. Across the street there, see? Here's the key. You trust me, then? After midnight, I'll leave out a light. Come to me. Too much risk. Be worth it. I guarantee. I'll think about that offer. Now, fetch Silas and 
Hurry! Where is she? Which road? Ah, yes. There you are, my beauty. <laughs> what are you up to, little man? Huh? Tell me. I'll crush your windpipe, else. <laughs> oh, my God, he's having a fit. Oh, don't spit on me. Dying? Uh, Hurry up, then, and die. <laughs> <sighs> Fell for that one, did you? <sighs> Nothing beats a kick to the cods, eh? <sighs> I was going to steal her purse, but I can make do with yours. Bye now. Crossroads. Damnation. Oh, might as well try. Cats are wise creatures. Save for Samuel, of course. I need to speak with Mr. Newton. Uh, he is not yet home. Oh, he'll be at the Mint. I could go there directly. Uh, you look somewhat poorly, sir. Uh, I excuse myself. I, uh, I'm in disguise. Disguise? As you see. Have you been set upon? N no, just short of breath. Oh. Um, uh, Catherine, uh, may I may call you so? You often have. It is my name. Yes. Um, I, I was wondering when uh, there is more leisure to spare. Might we have coffee together in a coffee house? A coffee house? Yes. Uh, places where one might have coffee with a friend. Uh, uh, may I invite you? I see no harm in it. Thank you. <laughs> I, I will, of course, be more suitably attired. No harm in coffee. I'm sure Mr Montague would not object. I have some news, sir. You look dreadful, Mr. Haynes. I'm in disguise. Well, your neck is bruised, bloody. C come, sit down. I was attacked. You escaped, however. Ungentlemanly tactics, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was worth the pain. We shall find out in the morning. I cannot believe this. Belief has nothing to do with facts. A monstrous accusation. Mr. Haynes put his life at risk. I would ask you observe that. Isaac, I have no doubt Haynes is a brave man, but this, this is a most serious charge. Penalty of death. I am aware of such. Sorry to be late, sir. Further success? Uh, possibly. I have brought Mr. Montague up to date with our investigation. He finds it hard to credit. But merely facts, hidden and discovered. I would prefer it from your own mouth, sir. Very well. Last night, Jamie Wilde met with a woman. She passed him a piece of paper of sorts. I watched this outside a tavern, followed her. You were attacked in this pursuit. I believe that is worthy of note. Uh, it, it matters little. It matters much to me. Continue, sir. I tracked her, finally, to an address in Hyde Park, a well-to-do area. It being then too late in the night, I reported back to Mr. Newton to decide upon a plan of action. As far as we could. In the morning, I returned and spoke with the landlady of the building. Mr. Haynes has a better touch with landladies than myself. A, a kindly soul, but inquisitive. The rooms were rented by a gentleman. The young woman, pleasant enough, but the landlady thought. Perhaps a wife in watercolours? A mistress, so Mr. Haynes informs me. I had a piece of luck. The day before, the old lady had heard voices in the street, loud, drunken, two men. She also heard a name. You're a lucky devil, Thomas Carey. Mm. From the window, she saw that the man thus addressed was the man who had rented the rooms. Thomas Carey, a member of your party.
Men are ready, Mr. Wilde. Then we'd best be on our way. Not taking so many this time. From what I know, we have no need. Mount up! Uh, oh! Hurts, does it, Silas? Oh, damn little thief. <laughs> Take better care of the crown jewels. I have mine promised. Stay here, Jupiter. You're brave as a lion, but you might come to harm. You love that dog. Other than my dear mother, the only soul ever showed me a moment of affection. Thomas Carey fell from grace, became embroiled in a scandal, a conspiracy of Sir John Fenwick, a charge of undutiful words against the king. Would that not indicate a certain lack of loyalty? It was a lack of judgment. Carey is a royalist to the core, but he lost his position in the treasury. And you are now chancellor. Did Carey blame you for his fall, or did he consider it merely a consequence of gravity? I, I had nothing to do with the decision. But you reaped the benefit. And should you fall in turn, would he not benefit also? I see the import of what you imply, but I cannot believe Carey would stoop so low. He is a politician. And so am I, Mr Haynes. You told me Carey had quit the committee. That is true. Therefore he would not know any of the information. Exactly. But does he still have friends there? Digby Lonsdale. They carouse together. Perhaps you might have a quiet word with Mr. Lonsdale. I will do so. Now, this is all predicated upon a mistress, a woman we know nothing about. I'm in the process of rectifying such ignorance. The name she goes under is Miss Bell Russell. The landlady confirmed that much. It means nothing to me. It means something to Thomas Carey. We need to go, sir. Time flies. Indeed, it does. We shall meet again shortly, Charles. Where are you off to now? I have a rendezvous with two plump hens and a bloodthirsty tomcat. Better if it lashed with rain, Mr. Wilde. Yes. Still night and a full moon favours no one. The men are wondering when they get their share. When I say so. Start throwing money in the taverns and Newton's men will be on us like the plague. Yeah, it makes sense. I'll tell them. I saw Newton once. In the street. What did he look like? Tall, thin, dressed in black. Not a smile on his face. Like retribution. There's a fancy name for it. Nemesis. <laughs> You put a lot of stock in that blade. It's tasted blood. Many a time. The fox. Female. Looking for a male. Nature. Never at rest, eh? This incline is perfect for viewing the road. We should see the wagon approach. And the attackers, let us hope. Great pity Catherine could not be here. Why? Well, she'd enjoy the adventure. My niece has pirate's blood. <laughs> really? No. A flight of imagination. I, I admire her. Greatly. Catherine has many admirers. Mm, I'm sure. Poets in the coffee houses. Hmm. I believe Mr. Montague writes poetry. Is it... Of any standard? I'm told it is somewhat effusive. There it is. Indeed. And we have a hunter's moon. Steady now. Steady. Let's get closer. You're right. It's just a few on guard. My sweet angel is never wrong. Same rules apply. Knock them off the horses in the wagon. If they resist, be it on their own head. Now! Right. Right. Come on! Get out! Get out! Get out. They've taken the bait, and now we hook them in. Quietly does it, lads. Get behind, then strike. Uh, Mr. Newton, if I may be so bold. Don't worry, Mr. Haynes. I do not intend to lead the battle charge. 
cut them down if you have to. Join me. Men at the back of us. What? The whole of them. Damnation. Newton. It has to be. Get back to your horses. Run for your lives. Oh, sorry, sir. My foot got in your way. You're that little thief. On the side of heaven now. Rope him up and take him home. Where's Mr. Newton? Damned horses. Where are they? I think, sir, you have reached the end of your tether. <laughs> Newton. Retribution, eh? You will drop the blade, please. Oh, belongs in my stick. But once it's out, needs a target. I cut your friend through the gut. Miller, down he went. I do the same for you. I have a clean shot. Do not tempt me. Oh, well, that's the devil's job, is it not? Temptation? Ah! Mr. Newton. Are you all right, sir? Yes, yes. Help me to my fees. Wild. I shot him, but he charged me, knocked me to the ground. There he goes. Get the horses! Follow on! I'm afraid he'll have a head start. Yes, but I did not miss. He carries a deep wound to the lower abdomen. I did not miss. You came. A woman of your word. Where are you? Over here. The bed. Light the candle. Good Lord. What happened? My guts are in a parlous state. Blood enough. Blame it on Isaac Newton. He did this. I didn't think he'd have the nerve. <laughs> Ambush. They were waiting for us. How did they know? <coughs> Somebody must have talked. Not my men. I only told them last minute. Is someone on your side? No. It's not possible. How did you get here? There's a back door. To my building. I always use that. <laughs> Clever girl. I can't go back there. Well, stay with me. They'll find you. Soon. At least get me a doctor. I can't move. I'm sorry for that. You're a beautiful woman, Belle Russell. But you've damn near killed me. <coughs> Why drag me in? Why do it all? I made a promise. I have to keep it. A big thing. Bigger than you or I. A promise. Who to? God. My father. <laughs> I never had one of them. Mother raised me. Raised me well. Always taught me to be clean and tidy. Told me nothing about him, but gave me this stick. Stole it from him, she said. My father. Only evil deed she ever did in her life. But then she died and I went to the bad. Good steal. You must have had money, eh? It's too late for doctors. <sighs> They'll find you. You know too much about me, Jamie. I can't let that happen. Without me, you've nowhere to go. I have good friends. They will help me. A whore has no friends. I'm more than that. Come to me, then. A farewell kiss. You cut my throat. <laughs> That's no lie. A bullet beats the blade every time. Bell Russell, eh? I'm afraid so. Second time this night. My luck's really gone to hell. 
Sorry I can't say goodbye to Jupiter. He's a good old boy. Goodbye. <laughs> Pity. I was getting quite fond of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, Jamie, I'll just blow out the candle. This is a damned impertinence. It is a necessity, sir. I thought it best we meet here at the Mint, Mr. Carey, rather than Parliament Office. We don't want rumours to begin. I have nothing to hide. Belle Russell. How did you meet her? None of your business. Best answer, Thomas. It is a serious matter. Mother Wiseborns, plying her trade, took her out, made a mistress of her. The mistress? Not against the law, is it? Such a subject was not included in my study of natural philosophy. What is her history? From Newcastle, she said. I know little else. We didn't discuss her origins. Why do you want to know all this? Belle Russell is implicated in the robbery of two silver wagons. One thwarted, the other successful. The contents now recovered from a warehouse in the docks. One of the main perpetrators found dead this morning. The other, your mistress, is stood at large. Not true, surely. Confirmed and witnessed by Silas Jones, one of the robbers. The woman set it all up and supplied exact details. This is hard to credit. Not possible. The question is, how did she acquire these details? Well, not from me. I resigned. I spoke with Mr Lonsdale, who is on our committee and privy to such. He confessed to me that yourself and he often discussed such matters over a hearty meal. <laughs> Gossip. Nothing more. Men have died. The structure of recoining put at risk. Positions threatened. Our country betrayed. A great deal more. Are you calling me a traitor, sir? Did you confide in Bell Russell? She... She had a way of wheedling things out of you. I don't remember. I'd be obliged if you might give me the key to her apartments. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Nothing to hide. I take it she has disappeared? For the moment. Just a mistress. Picked out along the way. Can I go now? For the moment. Good day to you. Do you believe him? I think he tells some truth, but... Like so many of us, his motives are mixed. Uh, have some more cake, if, if you please, Catherine. <laughs> I am replete. Mm. Thank you. Mm. It has things in it. Uh, poppy seed. Ah, I like poppies. They grow wild. What are you looking for? Uh, poets. Too early in the day. Ah, I was delighted to receive your invitation. Oh, uh, Mr Newton and Mr Montague are engaged in matters of state. <laughs> I'm never high enough to attend. So, I am your lowly substitute? Ah, uh, no, not at all. <laughs> I welcomed the break from our investigation. So, I am a break also? Uh, no, no, that's not what I meant. I am teasing you, Mr Haynes. <laughs> Only right. <laughs> Uh, you may call me Hopton, if you prefer. Hopton Haynes. My mother gave me the name, never explained it. I favour Mr Haynes. I'm glad to hear it. What are your parents like? Uh, dead. My father in unfortunate circumstance, my mother soon after. I am sorry to hear that. Uh, it's in the past. This is the present. And how is the investigation? Dark. Sinister. Unfinished. My uncle is lucky to have you at his back. Like a three-headed dog. <sighs> oh! <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> that 
<laughs> that was most lifelike. Uh, I'm adept at imitating animals. It's just humans I lack. You could help me, perhaps. With what? Humans. How? Together. An investigation, perhaps. Mr Haynes, Mr Montague, Charles and I have become close. Ah, I hadn't noticed. It is a private matter. Does Mr Newton know? In good time. Hmm. Already does, probably. Isaac Newton knows everything. Does he not, Catherine? When they discovered the body of Jamie Wilde, I had been summoned at once. His room was oddly clean and tidy, as if he had been instructed so as a child. He had a smile on his face. How strange to smile. At whom, I wonder? Bell Russell, perhaps? As well as my shot to his gut, he had another just below the heart. He was holding a sword stick, the blade uncovered. I took it from his stiff claw of a hand. The blade that had cut into Elliot Miller's flesh. In this business, one death leads to another, and the Trinity always comes into play. Two deaths, one more to arrive. Everything in three. Belle Russell. I could almost taste her presence out there, her hatred. For the game was not over. Second law, force and motion takes place along that straight line in which that force is impressed. And she was like an arrow aiming directly at me. What was it that was driving her? And what would be her next move? These two extra shipments have near split the place apart, sir. We cannot stop. If necessary, we will work through the night. The machines may not be able to cope. It must be done. The big printer! Seized up again, sir! Yeah. What did Miller do? Banged it outside with the big iron hammer. Then you do the same. As you command, sir. You see? Pure mathematics, Mr. Gilchrist. Isaac! I have news! Hold firm, Mr. Montague. Come along, Mr. Haynes. Time waits for no man. Oh, I die of thirst. Yeah, thank you, sir. Oh. Camels in the desert, eh? <laughs> what is your news? You first? Uh, nothing. Searched her rooms from top to bottom. Nothing personal, nothing to indicate who she is or was or anything. Mother Wiseborn's the same. She just turned up one day, had the looks, they took her on, and then Thomas Carey came to call, as he did most nights. <laughs> A creature of habit. I may have something better. Enlighten us. I spoke with Richard Vernon, our Secretary of State. Head of your beloved committee. A man with connections. The government has a secret force that operates in London. Spies, you mean? Yes. Who do they spy on? Enemies of our kingdom. They received word that there was a cell of French sympathisers formed in the city, with the avowed aim to destroy the Royal Mint. <laughs> then why in hell did they not tell us? They work in secret, Mr Haynes. Did you know this, Charles? Oh, I would have told you else. So? Broke the cell this day, captured them all, their records, everything. So, why the long face? Took them all except one, a woman. Belle Russell. Isabelle Roussy. Her father, a French sailor, married a Newcastle woman. He was hung by the neck in that city. A drunken mob thought he was a spy. How old would the girl be, then? Five years of age. There's your driving force. Mm. It's chaos down there, sir. We need more men. I shall fetch them, Mr. Gilchrist, and thank you, Charles. And better late than never, eh? Yes. Better late than never. Mm. 
sir. Are you all right, sir? What? Oh. Yes. I think. I'm, I'm sorry to wake you, but uh, Mr. Gilchrist fears the machines will not last. They must. Be careful, oh. sir. I'm, I'm fine. Fine. I need some air, that is all. We do not stop. Tell Gilchrist that. Just a minute or two outside, that's all I ask. Noble firmament, eh? Spread out like a carpet. Isaac Newton? Yes? Bell Russell. The whole of London searches for you. Well, here I am. I was wondering how to get in and out you come. Must be fate, eh? If you believe in such a thing. I have a gun pointed at you under my cloak. You'd be hard to miss. I expect so. I know some of your history, Isabel. And you know, my father was hung by a bunch of drunken animals because he was French. Because your country hated them. Yes. My mother died at my birth. He was all I had. I watched him jump, shake, shudder while they howled then he was still then they cut him down left him in the street like a dog I swore vengeance that day yes against this country not all men are I swore vengeance turn round go inside I'll be right behind you like a ghost No further, please. Keep to the shadows. I assume you have a plan? Simple. I push you into the light. Shoot you dead in front of all your men. No cover-up. Not possible. Too many witnesses. I am put on trial. I name Thomas Carey, Lonsdale even, in a plot to bring down the government. All the proof is there. Without you, the mint falls. You overvalue my prowess. It falls like a rotten apple. The recoining fails, chaos follows. Not total destruction, but the best I can do. Now, step forward. Who is that behind Mr. Newton? I can't see, sir. In the shadows. Out of the way, please. A woman, I think. A great pity, Bell Russell. I would have enjoyed our conversation. We can talk in hell. I warned you, Mr. Newton! Do as you did before, sir! He'll fall apart! Do it! Say your prayers, sir. Mr. Miller, where are you now? I can't get a bead on her. Step out, madam, if you please. Goodbye, Mr. Newton. You have nothing to prove, then? Bell Russell is indeed dead. Killed by a piece of machinery and force of gravity. And I am in the clear. Yeah, quite right. Not exactly. There will be an investigation of sorts, and from now on, sir, you will, in the common parlance, keep your nose clean. Do you understand me? Yes. You will report to me. Yes. You may go now. That's my stick. I beg your pardon? The umbrella stand, just there. Mine. Where did you get this, Mr. Newton? I kept it as a souvenir of investigation. Mine? Oh, look. Deep scratch on the handle where I dropped it one day and... Maker's name. Yours, you say? Stolen from me by a serving maid. Martha Wilde. Pretty enough, but got above her station. I was a young man then. Did you sleep with her? A man's private affairs are his own. But it's mine. Well, 
You had better have it, then. Only lawful. Good day to you. You did not think to tell him? That his possible son was shot by his actual mistress? No. No, requiescat in pace. Let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> what a tale. Yes, indeed. And Mr. Miller had his vengeance. Retribution. Mm. I feel sorry for Bell Russell. She would have killed your uncle, though. Mm. There is always that, Mr. Montague, here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I regret that Mr. Haynes could not be here. Said he would prefer to wander the streets. He is somewhat nomadic by nature. Uh, in that case, Isaac, I wonder... Ah! That might be him now. I doubt it. It's too early. He's a night owl. Sir, uh, there is something Catherine and I would like to discuss with you. Such as? It, it is somewhat delicate. Charles, last night I had a pistol pointed at my head and a large piece of unreliable machinery throbbing above. Delicacy does not sit with me at the moment. We have a visitor with company. <laughs> Mr. Haynes. Uh, what is that? A bulldog. Jupiter, by name. Oh. Jupiter is the king of the planets. <sighs> I will fetch some water. Found him outside a tavern. Some men were trying to bait him into a fight. He used to belong to Jamie Wilde, they told me. Hmm. He's a good old boy. So I brought him to heel. Did they not object? I told them I was the good right hand of Isaac Newton. Ah. Only too pleased to pass him over. Here you are, Jupiter. Thank you, Catherine. He's a decent soul. Can keep me company. Always welcome. May I interest you in a glass of wine, Mr. Haynes? Why not? A fine night. Mm. Good to be alive. Mm. As long as someone guards your back. <laughs> Quis custodiat ipsos custodis? Who will guard the guardians? What deadly purpose lurks behind us all at any time? Fate? Death? Vengeance? Belle Russell watched her father hang like a common criminal, yet he was an innocent man. And in the name of that innocence, she chose a destructive retribution. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord but we humans seem to prefer to usurp the creator. Nemesis takes many forms. As the evening wore on, I found myself gazing at the dog, Jupiter. The very name connected him to the vastness and mystery of the universe. I watched him lick his chops, and together we contemplated what the future might bring. In Isaac Newton Nemesis by David Ashton, Isaac Newton was played by William Gaminara, Hopton Haynes by Gunnar Cawthory, Catherine Barton, Laura Christie, Charles Montague, Rick Warden, Thomas Carey, Clive Hayward, Belle Russell, Melody Grove, Jamie Wilde, Will Kirk, Silas and the Mint Worker, Neil McCall, and Gilchrist by Greg Jones. Isaac Newton Nemesis was a BBC Scotland production directed by Bruce Young. Mm -hmm.